as far as receivers go, as far as receivers go, when it comes to receiver this week, I think we have a very we have a very small tier one, in my opinion. CeeDee Lamb against Baltimore, Jamar Chase against Washington, Amon Ross St. Brown against the Cardinals, Justin Jefferson against Houston. I think that's it. I think that's the safe tier. We know those guys can all perform, have big weeks, no quarterback issues, no performance issues. All there. The only one performance issue is Jamar. And the reason why I put him in this tier is because of the matchup against Washington. He's going to go crazy. The receivers have eaten against the commanders in both in back to back weeks. It's just, it is what it is. So the commander's defense last year was atrocious against receivers. This year, it's a lot of the same. Secondary still needs help. Even though Dan Quinn's there, this the secondary still needs help. So Jamar Chase goes in this tier, whether or not T. Higgins plays. I haven't seen the latest on T. Higgins yet. Uh, I know he was questionable to play, trying to make it back. A lot of positive things. Uh, but Jamar Chase, to me, is still a uh, is still a, a top option for me this week. In the next tier, I can see these guys being elite wide receiver ones. I think they just have more question marks. Tyreek Hill against Seattle uh, this week. Tough matchup uh, against Seattle, but then also with the quarterback issues. Devontae Adams against Carolina. Devontae Smith against the Saints. Chris Olave is up in this tier for me against Philly. Um we got Chris Godwin against Denver, especially with Patrick Sertan probably draped all over Mike Evans this week. We have Nico Collins in this tier. I also have Mike Evans in this tier. Rishi Rice in this tier. Brandon Ayuk against the Rams. Marvin Harrison up against Detroit. And then Stephon Diggs against Minnesota. So these are receivers I have in like the secondary tier where I'm kind of balancing them between like this wide receiver one, wide receiver two range. All of these guys are starts to me, like no matter what. Um, your concern might be Mike Evans up against Sertan. We've seen even like a DK Metcalf can get a 50 yards. And we know we've seen Mike Evans beat tough matchups before. So if you're considering like, do I play Mike Evans or not? I think you still play him even given the matchup. We've seen Baker will throw his way, especially if it's single coverage. And he'll try tough matchups even at times. Mike can beat a tough matchup. Other maybe like questionable players you're probably thinking here. Chris Olave, who we saw have a decent game last week. But we haven't seen any of those big breakout games from him. Going up against a Philly secondary that's given up a little bit. So I think he belongs in this tier as well. You could kind of move him up and down, but I think he should have a strong day. And if it's not him, Shahid's going to go crazy. If it's not Olave, Shahid is going to go crazy this week. One of those two receivers is going to have a pretty good week. I have Olave in this tier. I think he's a good start. Solid option for targets. Wouldn't surprise me to see Shahid in this wide receiver two um, type of range. I don't quite have him there as far as start and sit, but I moved him up into like this high-end wide receiver three range. Uh, at least Rashid Shahid I have. For now, I got Olave up here. I talked about this on another show too. Wouldn't it be surprising like at the end of the season to see Rashid Shahid either somewhere near Olave or even past Olave um, when it comes to production? I don't want to go that far and say that, but it would not surprise me. And as far as Nico and Stephon Diggs, Nico with a tough matchup on the other side against Stephon Gilmore and obviously was a little banged up on Wednesday. I know he's back in practice, expected to play, but just something to note there, especially if Diggs going to back up against Minnesota, um, they do tend to utilize him a little bit more out of the slot. And Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison's in this tier. You might be wondering, why is he not higher up? Why is he not like an elite wide receiver one? I just think we saw a little glimpse of what he can do, and he might be inconsistent for your team on a weekly basis. So he does pose like a middling wide receiver two for me, a guy that could probably get you 20 to 25 points any given week and then might have some slower games, you know, some seven to 10 point games here very soon, but still definitely belongs in this tier. All right, next up in the third tier, we have a wide range, and I think all of these guys are interchangeable for different reasons. We got Drake London with the matchup against Trent McDuffie against KC. DK Metcalf against Miami, Calvin Ridley against Green Bay, Malik Neighbors against Cleveland. And Malik Neighbors obviously a force fed a, a ton of targets last week against the Commanders. Going up against Denzel Ward becomes a lot riskier play this week against a stout Cleveland defense. So a lot of lower scoring matchups on the board this week. When we talk about totals for, for football, like you'll see some of them rolling down here on the bottom of the screen. A lot of them in the 30s, which you don't want to see for fantasy because typically that means it's a lower scoring game, less output, right? So you want to see games that are like 45 and above. That typically means there's more offense to go around in those games. And with some of the some of the matchups this week, it gets a little bit uglier when it comes to potential scores. So just be careful with that, knowing some of these plays, like especially um, what games is Steelers and who Steelers Chargers is pretty low. Um 
there's a few that are like 36 and a half. So as those are going down on the bottom of the screen, check them out and just know like those are potentially, they're not always like that. Vegas isn't perfect. They're potentially lower scoring games. Also in this tier, we got George Pickens up against the Chargers. That's say Zay Flowers against Dallas. Michael Pittman against the Bears in a pretty tough matchup there on the other side uh, with Jalen Johnson. Demarcus Robinson is in this tier against the Niners. Um, Jameson Williams with the upside is here against the Arizona Cardinals. Jackson Smith and Jigba against the Miami Dolphins. DJ Moore against the Colts. Amari Cooper against the Giants. Jaden Reed against Tennessee. Jalen Waddle against Seattle. Terry McLaurin against the Bengals. Rashid Shahid against Philly. All of these running these wide receivers are in this tier. And now that we know George Kittle is out, Juwan Jennings belongs in this tier as well. Okay. But George Kittle expected to be out. Juwan Jennings belongs in this tier now as well. So when I look at when I look at all these receivers, there's either they haven't performed, they have a very tough matchup on the other side and proven that they haven't been consistent against tough matchups, or they have upside, like weekly upside, but they also have a, a really risky floor that comes baked in there. And maybe we haven't seen enough consistency from them. So that's kind of, that kind of is what makes up here this wide receiver three tier. And if you ask me like, hey, do I start DK Metcalf or Rashid Shahid? I might be in my head thinking that's that's pretty damn close, right? And there's that. And now you're starting to look like, do I need more of the mega game from DK Metcalf? Am I chasing the upside and the hot streak right now with Rashid Shahid? It becomes a lot more of a questionable decision than I ever thought it would be coming into like the season. I never thought I'd be questioning like, do I play Terry McLaurin or do I play like Demarcus Robinson? But we're at that point now where, you know, we're starting to see what some of these offenses can do. We're starting to see some of these guys become a little bit more questionable than we thought. And we've also seen players that weren't as were, that were a little bit more questionable that have now become way more consistent for our lineups or offer maybe some more upside. So, I think in this in this tier right here, the one I just mentioned, this third tier, these are guys that are all startable as wide receiver threes, flexes in your two receiver leagues. Like they're all startable, but they all come with whatever question marks that they have. So at the top of the list, there's probably the more consistent names. At the bottom was a little bit more of the risky names that I mentioned. Then we have this fourth tier. And this fourth tier is like your flex options that carry a ton of upside but they may not be as safe as you want to have. You have your Tank Dell, Brian Thomas Jr. is in this one, Khalil Shakir, Brandon Cooks, Jacoby Myers, Christian Kirk, Xavier Worthy, and that's it, right? Brian Thomas, obviously, we against Buffalo, we've seen him kind of elevate to this number one receiver role for Jacksonville. Really good to see that, but he's also hasn't had, you know, he had kind of a lower game last week. We need to see more touchdown, more volume from him. Brandon Cooks against Baltimore, obviously Marvin hum Marlon Humphrey is probably going to be trying to shadow CeeDee Lamb. I know they try to use them all over the formation, but it wouldn't surprise me to see, especially with Jake Ferguson out, Brandon Cooks take an elevated level. Last week it was Jalen Tolbert who had a little bit more of an output. Wouldn't surprise me to see Brandon Cooks, who was strong in week one, have a better performance this week. Christian Kirk, Jacoby Myers, like names that were really consistent last year for our teams, a little bit more questionable this year, especially when it comes to Jacoby Myers in the breakout for Brock Bowers. Had a good week one, a little bit more of a down week two for him. Xavier Worthy, we know he has the upside for, you know, 80 yards, two touchdowns. We saw it in week one, but then he doesn't get a whole lot of touches in this offense. So down Isaiah Pacheco, they might get him a little bit more involved in the reverse game, in the ground game, get some, some designated plays for him in the screen game to kind of offset some of the things they're not able to do out the run game. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Xavier Worthy have a much better game than he did last week. But at the same time, we got to know, like, Rashi Rice, Travis Kelsey – they are is what the offense goes as far as the passing game. And in this last year of like really startable players, I think at the flex, like if you're looking for flex options in your, you know, 12 team, three receiver leagues, this is kind of like the last real area of like, maybe I'll start this guy, you know, in the five and six tier. I think some are safer. Some are a little bit more questionable. Deontay Johnson, Jerry Judy, Romo Dunze, Alec Pierce, Josh Johnson, or excuse me, Josh Reynolds, and then that kind of ends this fifth tier for me. There's not really a whole lot there. Everybody else is going to be much more questionable. You have Keon Coleman, Christian Watson, Rashad Bateman, A.D. Mitchell, Greg Dorch, Tyler Lockett, Vlad McConkie against Pittsburgh, Adam Thielen all answered this, and Quentin Johnson's in this tier as well. Kind of questionable starts here. Wondell Robinson's in here. Just some floor, upside, just a lot of risk here in this tier, and I didn't see any clear 
player in there that just has like this upside that you have to start. So a lot of questionable plays in there. Don't mind if you bench any of them. Don't mind if you start them. That's just that's here. As far as tight ends go, um, I think everything after <laughs> everything after like the second tier is very questionable. Trey McBride, Travis Kelsey, Laporta are still my top three. Um, Brock Bowers is right there on the cusp of it, but Brock Bowers belongs at the top of the next tier, in my opinion. Bowers, Pitts, Kincaid, Mark Andrews, and then that's really it. Isaiah Likely is a questionable play. Dallas Goddard is a questionable play. Pat Fryer moves a questionable play. Because second, like they all have just so many question marks. If you have a good tight end right now, I would say this. Hold them. You have a good tight end right now, somebody who's done you well, hold them. Because there's a lot of really just I could say, I could say Mike Isecki's gonna have a good game. That could be a three-point player. You know, and you're looking for like maybe matchups wise. We haven't seen enough matchup wise from some of these teams to give them like Gasecki. We don't know if T. Higgins is gonna be there. Dalton Schultz. There's too many options in the passing game right now. Is he going to be consistent? Kate Auden, this thing has gone through Mike Evans and Chris Godwin through the whole year. Can Kate Auden have a bigger role as Liam Cohen said they want to get him more reps? Zach Ertz don't offer a whole lot of upside. Kobe Parkinson is going to be in because there's just a lot of question marks when it comes to tight end. So if you have a trade on the table for a McBride, a Laporta, a Kelsey, even if you can go get a Kittle, a David, like if you can get just a consistent name at tight end right now while everybody's underperforming. I think this is the time to do it. Kyle Pitts, Dalton Kincaid. I would be trying to trade for one of the more elite names that has not produced yet because everybody is struggling when it comes to tight end right now. Even Travis Kelsey and Sam Laporta haven't been what we drafted them to be, right? So if you're struggling at tight end, unless you unless you have Brock Bowers, unless you have Brock Bowers, you're probably like, damn, I need help at tight end right now. Do I need help? Trey McBride, maybe you're there but everybody needs help at tight end right now. So until we get some more consistency out of the position, until we get more consistency from some of these players and in their roles, right now it is it is the ultimate crapshoot. I'm I, I would I hate to say that and just be like I don't really like any tight end. There's it is the ultimate crapshoot right now at the tight end position. So I think outside of your more consistent names, McBride, Kelsey, Laporta, Bowers is right on the cusp there. George Kittle's out, Evan Ingram's out, David Njoku's out. Make a way for yourself and just Try to go through. Try to get through these these tight ends, man. All right.